Hi, this is Charlie Montotobiello with Blue Bear Flutes. Just wanted to give you a quick tip for all of you flute makers out there today on how it is that we round our flutes over in this day and age. So, uh, just a couple of quick things that might help you out. Say you have a flute, for example, this key of G flute that you want to wind up being somewhere around, looks like it's about one and a half inches in diameter. One and a quarter inches in diameter when it's finished. It has about a seven eighths of an inch inside diameter, so it's going to leave us somewhere around between an eighth and, oh gosh, three sixteenths, somewhere in that range of wall thickness. Now, that gets a little complicated after a while, but it doesn't have to be, and I'll show you the trick that I use to make sure that I come out with a really nice round flute. Of course, it starts with your flute length. This is a key of G or a key of F sharp flute length, and on a hard day I might make an E out of it as well. But anyway, the wall thickness of this guy, let's see where we're at here, it looks like it's about 3 sixteenths ish. So around 6 or 7 millimeters thick wall thickness right there. And we assume that the wall thickness is going to be about the same this way, or at least we hope it is, if I round it out properly it will be. And when we put this together, well, first, most of you probably know this already, but I like to drill my holes from the inside so that they're nice and clean. And also burn the inside of it before I glue it together. Now this is, of course, one of hundreds of techniques of making a flute, but this is the one that we typically use. So um, I mark my pattern on the inside, drill all my holes out. I even have a mortiser that I use to drill a square hole up here to save me some time on making a square sound and air supply hole. So that everything's uniform and you know does like it's supposed to. And then we'll burn the inside, sand it, glue it back together, and then we have a blank. So the blank from that point is ready to be planed down into its relative square size so that I can round it over and then sand it appropriately so that it'll turn off nice and round like this. Anyway, this little trick is something I'm gonna show you today. Sometimes I use my caliber if it seems like it's a little tricky and sometimes I just do it by sight, which is probably the quickest, easiest, and best way on so many levels. If you look right here, the width of this is somewhere around 34 millimeters, but the thickness of it this way is looking at somewhere around 37 millimeters. So we've got two extra millimeters of thickness this way that we don't have this way. I'll show you how I handle that. You want to watch me on the planer here. I know everybody's planers probably have some kind of quirks about them. Mine is no different. For whatever reason, the bed of this device here is a little shallower over here and a little deeper over there. So if I cut it here, I can actually move it down there and cut another millimeter off. Let me put my headphones on for this. I have those ready. Something I always like to mention is you should wear proper safety uh, tools whenever you're using a big heavy machine like this. One thing you don't want to ever do is stick your hand down in there where that business end of the blade is. That is off limits. That can really tear. I've got so many friends missing digits because of that. If you watch me stick my hand up here, there's no moving parts in this part of the planer. So up here, it's just a couple of little spinny dills and things that lock it down and move it like that. The blades are actually underneath, so it's super safe for me to put my hand through here. For you, it may not be, so you got to watch out. Some planers actually have an open top. You don't want to stick your hand up in that thing. So you might have to go all the way around and get your piece of wood and come all the way back. For me, like I said, it's all covered, safe enough. I'm going to do it that way. So I took a little bit off of this and a little bit off of that. Probably not enough. But, most importantly, it looks like we're about a millimeter shy. I want to show you how to do it without even using that nasty old caliper.
headphones off for a second so that I can hear you better. Anyway, um, what I did was, instead of using the caliper to check its, its width and its thickness to make sure that they were the same, because you want a square board coming out of the other end of this thing eventually, um, I basically cleaned enough of the glue edge off of this, just a little bit, that it was nice and smooth and the glue was no longer present, which is hard to round off on the sander anyway. And then I did the same thing to the other side. Once again, I took off something about the thickness of a sheet of paper, maybe even a little bit less than that. Likewise, I did the same thing to the top and the bottom until they were even. If you'll notice, I picked up my caliper at one point and showed you. And I can, of course, measure this to size for you. My sight is actually still pretty good in that particular range. You notice they're the same thickness. So that's where I was showing you that I eyeballed the thickness of this piece of wood and the thickness of this piece of wood so that they were the same. And then I looked at the other side. You want to take an accurate census reading of everything to make sure that they're relatively the same on both ends of the flute as well as the top and the bottom of the flute. And if these two are the same as the width of this and you only took a paper thin piece off of this and off of that, then it's perfectly square and the round part of this flute is still on the inside center, very middle of this flute where it needs to be, which is nice. So the next thing I'm going to do is take it over to my roundover router and I'm just going to run it through so that it's nice and round and then it will be ready to sand down from there. As you may know or may not know, there was a time when I sanded everything on the belt sander and today, uh, typically as you see the markings on the bottom of this, we usually sand everything on a lathe. Um, in the old days, when I grew up using a lathe, I've been using a lathe I think since I was around 10 or 15, um, but I used to use a knife on the lathe. And that was kind of a good idea, but when you're working with something that's hollow, which mind you, the owner's manual of the lathe says not to turn anything hollow in the first place, which is kind of silly because bowl makers and flute makers do it all the time. But the um, hollow device or hollow piece of wood that you're, you're working on here has a tendency to torsion and twist a little differently than a solid piece of wood does because there's less material to work with in there. Having said that, if I were to put this on the lathe and put a knife or chisel, uh, as it's called, up against it to turn and cut the wood off of it, it can cause a major shock each time that blade touches the wood. Um, and those shocks and minor tremors can actually cause it to not loosen the glue, but to loosen the cracks and the grain in the wood, which may cause it to fly apart. Uh, out of the probably 1.6 million flutes we've made, and thinking of the probably a good well, almost three quarters of a million, no, 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 maybe, maybe a quarter of a million, I guess is more accurate, of flutes that I have actually turned using a chisel method. Out of all those flutes, I lost quite a few of them, to say the least. So um, I've learned not to do that, and there are no tools around my lathe. As a matter of fact, I do have a set of chisels we use for making bowls around here when we get bored, if that ever happens. They're over in my storage area but um, I always use sandpaper on this. So I'll show you how I round it off, then we'll turn it on the lathe and it's a finished flute. So that's about it. difficulty disrobing there. <laughs> anyway, as most of you can probably tell, this is quite round already as it is. It's because of the size of the roundover that I'm using there. I have a smaller roundover table right here, and that one lets me round over smaller sized flutes because the bit itself is actually quite a bit smaller. Um, so that's a one inch roundover, and this is a inch and a quarter roundover. And those various sizes will allow me to um, turn the square piece of wood into something much more readily, you know, turned into a round piece of wood, which is exactly which way we need to go. So, um, you know, basically from here, I'll lock it in on the lathe and we'll turn it round uh, with sandpaper. And that's really about it. 
turning something on the lathe in the first place is a dangerous notion, but to turn it and then use a chisel or a knife against it like you're supposed to, which is what a lathe is designed to be used for, um, is, is very dangerous. But it's not just dangerous to the individual, it's actually dangerous to the flute. It's more likely that it's going to get destroyed if you go that route than it would if you just sand it on the lathe. So all of the hard machinery and hard work that I just did to the, to the flute is something that was done with slow tools. I mean, granted, this thing turns really fast, but how fast I move it, it's kind of still a hand tool. Uh, I move it along there slowly, and that determines you know, how much stress the wood undergoes. So if I were to hold the chisel up against it, it would put it under more stress. And long story short, sandpaper works a lot better. Uh, and then we use varying grades of sandpaper from 60 to 120 to 220 to whatever we need to go from there by hand. But uh, on the lathe, the 60 and then 120 does really a good job. If you see, there's a really beautiful knot right there that's going to clean right up once this thing gets rounded off. I can't wait to see what it looks like. So anyway, I hope this has helped you all a lot in the idea of how to make a flute round when you're trying to save time and really I could hand sand that thing around the rest of the way at this point and don't even have to use the lathe. If it wasn't for the fact that we have so many flutes that we make, I would uh, I would skip the, the lathe notion and just go straight to hand sanding. But it's a lot quicker and gives my muscles a break. <laughs> anyway, I hope this video finds you all well and you find some use in it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and give us a thumbs up whenever you get a chance. We love to hear from you and see how you're doing. I hope uh, that you guys are enjoying your flute playing and flute making and all of you flute makers out there please remember you're flute players too you have to be it's required so uh, y'all take care have a great day thanks so much again for watching once again this is charlie montatuella signing out for blue bear flutes uh, bluebearflutes.com as well as on instagram and facebook we'll see you soon